Tonight, as we continue to follow the tragedy in Central Texas, we want to look now at the questions so many have right now this evening about that catastrophic flood. ABC 13 meteorologist Lee Smith joins us now with more on the weather system that triggered the flooding emergency. Good evening. Central Texas just witnessed one of its worst flooding disasters since 1987. The event is an example of how efficient and extreme Mother Nature can be when conditions are just right. So let me walk you through what happened meteorologically. Showers and storms began to develop across central Texas around midnight Friday, July 4th. These storms produced heavy rains with potential rainfall rates of upwards of three inches an hour. That's a sign that deep tropical moisture was overhead. In fact, these storms were able to tap into this tropical moisture from the remnants of three different things. One, the remnants of Hurricane Flossie from the Pacific, the tropical storm Barry that made landfall in Mexico and the Atlantic, and then a low level jet that was pulling in tropical moisture from the Gulf. Storms that exploded early Friday morning in size and number. Once they did, they were eventually able to, combined with that tropical moisture, allow for an upper level low to develop in the mid levels of the atmosphere. This is called a mesoscale convective vortex. It formed from the remnants of the circulation of Barry and the large thunderstorms overhead. And what's key about an MCV, as we call it, Developing where it did is it had nothing else in the weather pattern around that system to move it. Typically a jet stream when these systems develop in the upper Midwest or plains, they move them out, but nothing was able to move this weather system out once it was there. The jet stream was just too far north. So this allowed for the system to stall, leading to more rounds of heavy rain and flooding across the region for several days and into the weekend. And of course, the extreme rainfall amounts that fell in this area, you have to also think about topography. And and the soil both lend towards flash flooding because of the makeup. And Travis, let's bring you into this conversation now because this was something when my friends and family were reaching out to me over the weekend when thinking about the flooding we get here in Southeast Texas, mm -hmm. you have to think about all of the different factors that led to that extreme flood event in Central Texas. Yeah, for those who their main context is Southeast Texas, mm -hmm. you know that it floods here a lot, but it's flat yep. land, right? And so yeah. when we get the floods, we don't get those rapid rises and the fast moving water that can carry things downstream and just shred anything in its path. That's what you get over the Texas Hill Country. I grew up on the outskirts of the Hill Country fishing the Blanco River and uh, my dad, my, in fact, my great grandfather helped build the five mile dam at the state park there wow. back in the early 1900s. There was a time my dad was fishing on the Blanco River and he said that someone came and said, hey, there's a four foot wave coming down the river. You got to get out. Well, it turned out to be about a 14 foot wave. And if they hadn't gotten that information and gotten off the water, they would have been swept downstream. Those are the kinds of floods that happen because of the hilly terrain out in the Texas Hill Country. And it's it's truly uh, something difficult to grasp unless you have seen it before. It's just incomprehensible, that destruction. It really is. And that was something when that na that alert, the flash flood warning for the Guadalupe River at 530 Friday morning, when it said there was a large and deadly flood wave moving down the river, I couldn't imagine what that looked like. And then we got sunrise Friday and... The rest is history from what we were able to see. Yeah, and hopefully uh, that we can get some sort of a warning system established upon these watersheds that are prone to these mm -hmm. kinds of weather disasters. They don't happen very often, but when they do, unfortunately, it can often be with deadly consequence. Elise, thanks so much for that report.